Hey, listeners, before we get into today's podcast, I just first of all want to say thank you. Uh, this has been five years of podcasting for us, and I want to say thank you to those who have been here five years listening to us and those who are this is your first time listening. Um, it's been a, a phenomenal journey and a lot of fun. And I can't think of how else I would like to spend the next five years other than continuing to podcast and bring, hopefully bring you guys some great shows and great interviews. Um, with that being said, I want to thank today's sponsors, first of which is Pretentious Pickles. Um, our good friends at Pretentious Pickles, located right here in Plymouth, Massachusetts on 190 Water Street, um, have a huge variety of pickled items for your um, consumption. There's pickled beets. Brussels sprouts, carrots, mushrooms, cucumbers, you name it. They've put it in a jar and pickled it. They make a phenomenal product and for the second year in a row have been nominated. I'm sorry, not nominated. One uh, best gourmet shop in the South Shore, Massachusetts area. So congratulations to Lorraine and everyone at Pretentious Pickle Company. And if you can't make it to their store, you can stop by www.pretentiouspickle.com and you can place an order online. They'll ship it right to you. Um, it's if, if you're into pickles, you should definitely check that out. And today's second sponsor is Omeo. Omeo is a travel booking platform that makes planning a journey in Europe and North America effortless. Just enter your travel details and Omeo will magically give you all the train, bus, flight, and ferry options for your journey. It's never been simpler to book your first real vacation of 2021. Best of all, using Omeo saves you time and money. That's a win-win in our books. Omeo wants to help you leave your house this summer by offering 5% off your next booking. Just head to omeo.com, that is O-M-I-O.com, and use the code OMEO5 at checkout. Valid until July 31st for new users on all modes of transportation. It's just the pick-me-up 2021 needs. Omeo, plan, book, and love the journey. Terms and conditions apply. And I was like, that note. and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. My kids are like, what? I'm like, nothing. I can't, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back to the old college cast, a podcast about all things Plymouth in the surrounding area. That's all I got, Andy. I that don't was do really I know. That was pretty good. I'm proud of that one. But yeah. Nice job. But now you're supposed to like introduce people. Yeah. Who are Sorry. you? I am your producer and apparently guy stealing the intro fish. Uh, joining me is the, our actual host, Andy. Hello. And person who knows everything, Hannah. Hello. It's very enthusiastic. Hannah. I know. I I'm feel d- like it's my just it's weird, right? Usually just hello. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so, oh, so go on. Really <laughs> don't <laughs> don't let me get in your way. This is weird, and uncomfortable. I don't like all it right. all that much. But uh, so normally when we at, when we get to this point, we say Hannah, what are we talking about? And generally, we don't really know what Hannah's going to be talking about today. We literally don't know what Hannah's talking about. So, Hannah, what are we talking about today? I'm dying laughing. <laughs> I'm going to go, like, take a nap. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Andy, we've done that. Please don't make me do that. Okay. Again. <laughs> um, so, we're talking about a special type of crustacean sensation. Uh, That's not really a crustacean. Uh, Ooh, hermit crab. No. Hermit crabs? Close. He's about to say it. Horseshoe crabs. Yes. Oh, okay. I was, in my head, I was thinking... Horseshoe crab. Yeah. You know, I said hermit yeah, I crab. Like, hermit, wait, no, that's the wrong Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we were talking about horseshoe crabs. They're super important. They are super important. Um, I think some people might at this point say, this is going to be a dumb episode. I turn it off. I assure you it's don't. not. They're don't, fascinating. Don't do it. Well, yeah. They made it through my intro. They're committed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. true. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. she just did totally burn you. Like, oh, yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> true. Okay. Um, cry in the corner. So in researching horseshoe crabs, first top Google search that came up, which I loved, was um, horseshoe crabs can kill you? Question mark. <laughs> it's the number one like Google search thing and, for them, and they can't, right? Uh, I think right force, right angle, just about like, like I mean, yeah, yeah like yeah. 
Anything can happen. You know, someone could probably beat you to death with a uh, horse or crab if they wanted to. Yeah. But I mean, like, they're not. No, they're not. Like they're not humans. nature's most dangerous predator. No, no <laughs> at least not for humans. Okay. Um, no, that was a, an old quote my high school science teacher. Right first, right force, right angle. Just about anything can happen. Okay, I like that. And it's, I feel like, yeah, it explains a lot in life. For yeah. me. I feel like that's basically set up Hannah's mindset for the rest of her life. It yeah. just made me think of Steve Irwin. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. Steve Irwin. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, big fan. Yeah, right force, right angle, and a stingray can kill a man. Oh. Too soon? Is that what you were thinking of? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how else you would interpret that. I like that. to talk about murder, but not that one. Uh-huh. We can stay. Was it murder? Time. I mean, did they hold the stingray accountable? <laughs> I would have. And where do you put the handcuffs? <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of accountability. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like cuff them, Dano, and Dano's like, I don't really know. Where. Uh, so they're not actually crustaceans. I know I said that, but they're, they are a type of arth- arthropod. Okay. Which is... Do you know what is in the arthropod family? Um, of course I do. Uh, mm, uh, hmm, ticks? Yeah, that's one of them. So insects, arachnids, uh, myriapods, and crustaceans is part of that. Too. Okay. And um, they are members of the Lumolidia family. Okay. And they're part of the order of the Zy. Xyphosaurus. Xyphosaurus. It sounds like they're part of some weird, like, club. Yeah. Well, you said the, the, what family was it? The Lumilidia? Lumilidia? And I was already like, hmm. They, they need, that family needs a show like the Cardassians. Yeah, the, the Lum- <laughs> Lumulidae family in the part of the order of the Xyphosaurus. And yeah, it just reminded me of, like, who, like the crab guy from Futurama, Zoidberg. Zoidberg, Zoidberg yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. feel like this is whatever he was part of. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's definitely just a scientific, like, <laughs> gather, like a grouping of animals, but it's a real order, and I think they have secret meetings. So, um, <laughs> they're. The horseshoe crabs? Yeah. Okay. So they're real closely related to arachnids. That's like their next. I so they're know. more like spiders than crabs. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, and their closest relative is the giant sea scorpion, which is extinct. Oh, okay. Those are so cool. They are so cool. You ever seen one? I like, think not real life. so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. they're extinct. <laughs> but I, I mean, feel like I have... It's not that old. Well, they could have gone extinct recently. recently. Yeah, yeah, that happens every day. Yes, but n- No. No, but I feel like I, I have seen. It. It's yeah, been like yeah. four hundred million years. They're okay. cool. They're and very cool. cool. They look like scorpions. Yeah, but in the sea. In the sea, yeah. And I always um, so it's funny that they're closely related to arachnids because I've always considered spiders to be very crab-like. Okay. Which like I mean yeah I there are crab spiders and spider crabs. Yes. Different topic. <laughs> they um like I used to have a tarantula, mm-hmm. a rose haired one, and I wasn't scared to like hold her or anything. Well one because she's not aggressive. Um two because I just like literally looked at her as a crab. Okay. So like she felt like a crab, like her arms the little like felt like a crab. I almost said the little walkie parts. Have, <laughs> yeah, her legs. Yeah. Her legs. The legs. Yes. Yeah. The walkie parts. Um but yeah, so that's just you know. I feel like you can tell that by looking at them. Mm -hmm. We've all seen a horseshoe crab in this room. Sure. Yep. Uh, I've been to the aquarium. I've been to the You haven't seen them on the beach? Um, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a super pasty Irish guy. I don't go to the beach so much. As uh. the other super pasty Irish guy, I've at least, I was, when I was a kid. I mean, I might have. I don't recall ever seeing one on the beach. You've never seen a horseshoe crab in the wild? I don't think so. Let's go. Get, let's put this on pause. <laughs> to the ocean right now. I'll find I, you. I one. mean, again, I could or, have. Yeah. I just don't recall. All right. Well, I have no specific memory of. We'll that. get you one. All right. Uh, oh, pet. <laughs> and so, they are over 244 million year old species. So the ones we have on Earth today, but uh, very close. Like other species of them mm-hmm. have been found in fossil form from the Arda. Vickian period. They, all right. And, uh <laughs> uh-huh, that one. And which is like 450 million years ago. Wow. So they are considered, do you know what the phrase is? Old. 
living fossils. There we go. <laughs> living fossils. I feel and like I, I wasn't wrong. No, and I think when you think of like those big seascaped fossil like plate like not plates, but you know like the big areas of fossil. Yeah, there's always like some sort of horseshoe crab looking yeah. type yeah, thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're old. Yeah. They haven't had to change much. They got their They got it right. They got their routine down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what they do, they do well. Yes. Um, and there are currently four species of horseshoe crab, so we've only ever seen the species that lives in this ocean. But okay. the three other spe- species. Species. Anna's <laughs> now doing her best, um, oh God, Sean Connery impression. <laughs> wow, it wasn't a very good one. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Sorry. She tried. Never Mine again. Uh, the three others live in Asia. Okay. Or like near around Asia, India. Um Sorry. And, and I hope they listen to the podcast. Know. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> the podcast. So the first one is the mangrove horseshoe crab. Mm-hmm. And that is found in South Asia and Southeast Asia. Um, the Atlantic one, which is ours, or also called the American horseshoe crab. And that's found from like Maine yeah. all the way down through the Gulf and down through Mexico. Okay. And then... <laughs> The Indo-Pacific or the Indonesian one, which is obviously found in Indonesia. In, in Indonesia but more <laughs> I like how you asked a rhetorical question and waited for me to answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to keep keep you engaged. Yeah. I'm trying to give you one, Andy. Yeah. Um, they're found more broadly, though, again, just Southeast Asia, Southern mm-hmm. Asia, and then the Chinese or the Japanese or the really cool named one, Trispine. Oh, Horseshoe crab. That so is kind of coolest name one. Three, like, yeah. Guessing on where they're found or whatever. Um, same all over Asia. Uh, which I, so I think it's interesting that they shook out just in Asia and here on the side of the US. Oh, yeah, it's weird. Like, right? there's nothing yeah, there's like. nothing like on the East. Or like Europe or, yeah. yeah. Africa. I mean, they're yeah. pretty, there's a pretty big gap in between. Yeah. It's interesting. Right? Yeah. yeah. I thought that was cool. Or bad. I don't know. Interesting. Uh-huh. interesting. That's interesting. Leave yeah. it at yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, the reason why there isn't any is because we kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may be. Yeah. Uh, so the horseshoe crabs, I abbreviated them to HSC. Okay. So HSCs. Okay. I thought it was him. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, it's very cool. It's probably their, like, Instagram handle. Yeah. <laughs> at, at me at HSC. Um, they live in... What? Water? Ocean? <laughs> Salt water. I'm okay. just giving you a, like I, really fill in well, the blank. At, at first, I'm like, we already covered where they live. Like, why are you looking? Yeah. <laughs> Salt okay. water, but they can also live in brackish water. Okay. Uh, and they're usually found in the shallows, uh, tidal areas, sandy shoreline, peaches. They're, yeah, but not like they're not going to be hanging out on the rocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some animals are like, let's get to those rocks. That's right. that's the spot. Like starfish tend to like gather. Yeah. Kind of around rocks. Not these guys. Do they bury themselves in the sand? They do. Okay. And I am actually, like, the best at finding them. Okay. Do you know how to find them? No, I usually just... Do you be like, hey, HSC? No, I know exactly where they bury themselves. I did this once with Donnie. We walked down the beach and I said, I bet I can find a horseshoe crab every time I dig in the sand. And I did. Wow, really? Yeah. Yep. I don't think... I. I, again, I'm not a beach girl, but I typically don't think of them as being like that, common. like common. Oh, they're all over the place, M- mind you. Their numbers have dwindled. We'll get into that. <laughs> okay. But they they are all over the place. And um, the I where I grew up in the summertime, my nana's house on Saquish was Bayside, facing Clark's Island, mm-hmm. which is one of the first landing spots of the Pilgrims. And in the bay, that's one of the areas that they love to hang out in. Yeah. So you just became really accustomed to looking where you were stepping to not s- step on one. Because they'll kill you because they're the nature's most violent predator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, to not step on one because you don't want to step on one. It's rude. Yeah. Um, you were also... Probably, I don't know if you guys were, you haven't seen one in the wild, apparently. I've but seen them. People were, uh, we were always scared that their tails were going to stab through yeah, our Their tails are very pointy looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they look dangerous. Yeah. yeah. They're tactical creatures. Yeah. They're little tanks. <laughs> yeah. Tactical creatures. Honestly, they look like a battle bot that would make it pretty far but not quite win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can and, see that. Yeah. yeah. And um, so we were always scared we were going to step on them. 
And we didn't want their tails shooting up. Now, when they're buried in the sand, typically they're buried under there because the shore, the water has gone out. Yeah, yeah. So when the water's up, they're running around on the bottom doing, of the doing ocean. horseshoe crab things. Yeah, yeah. just having a blast. Body murder and yeah. Um, but that was obviously one of our fears. So I, you kind of learned really quickly how to figure out where they were because you just didn't want to step on them. Yeah. Um, they live in saltwater, brackish water, and like I said, usually in the shadow, shallows, not in the rocks, and they're in there because that's where a lot of their food is. What do they eat? Uh, they eat worms. Toes. T- and toes. <laughs> <laughs> they have like little vacuums. They're like Roombas. <laughs> um, and just different kinds of mollusks, smaller crustaceans, if yeah. they're... Obviously, like they need to be pretty small. So, well, they're kind of bottom feeders, so they yeah, just kind of would whatever, what whatever's they there. They yeah, are whatever's nature's there, little whatever's there and fits in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. and they scoop them all into their mouth. And uh, yeah, the worms. You ever seen like ocean worms? I don't think so. They're so gross. I'm like, thank God they eat them. <laughs> Even not in real life. Yeah, they're yucky. There's I, obviously different kinds of saltwater yeah. worms, but some of them are like very scary looking. Yeah, and I'm pretty happy that they're there to take care of them. So, getting into their anatomy, mm-hmm. um, we obviously talked about how they look like little tanks just because of their outer shell called the carapace. Okay. Um, and most of their eyes are on the top side of their body. Oh, okay. Um, their appendages are obviously on the bottom. Their little walkie parts. The little walkie parts. <laughs> the walkie parts and the feely bits. And, and the mouth, their mouth is on the underside as well. Their telson or telson is their tail. Okay. Um, and not used for spearing people's feet. What is it used for? It's used to flip themselves over if the f- a wave flips them over. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. And then I think it also has something to do with breeding because the males kind of hook on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will take this moment to let people know that if you see a horseshoe crab... Uh, best not to pick it up by its tail. Okay. Because its tail is technically attached by a joint, which is attached to another joint. It's part of its body, and their joints are fairly sensitive. And they do have feelings. So pick them up by the side of their shell. Okay. Cool. Or should they just not pick them up? Yeah, yeah, don't pick them up, but they are pretty cool. Yeah. I'm not advertising that you pick up horseshoe crabs. Okay. It's, it's what it but if like. you have to, what if one's in the road? Right. If you're rescuing one, don't pick it up by the tail. <laughs> yeah. In the road like a turtle. In the road like a like turtle. A random tortoise that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's outside the po- podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so their eyes. I talked about how most of their eyes are on their um, tops of their head, or they're just the top of their body because I guess that would be their head. Yeah. The top, but their mouth is on the bottom. Well, I'm, maybe they're just all head. But they have arms. Yeah. It's when the they grow out of their head. Sure. <laughs> so, um, first set is their compound eyes. Now, they're the most obvious set of eyes on them. They're yep. the ones that you can see as their eyes. Like, you're like, oh, and they're very grayish. And they, I feel like someone took a close up picture of one, like just looking, and it looked so distinguished. Like, I don't know how you could put like that much emotion into an eye. Yeah. But this thing looked like it was like gazing into you. In, at, right back at you. Weird. Hints of glare. Yes, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> I was like, wow, so deep. <laughs> so anyway, next is their median eyes, and these are actually closer to the front of their shell and kind of look like if it had a nose, that would okay. be its nose, but it's another set of eyes. Okay. Next is their lateral eyes, which is very close to their compound eyes, which is the deep gazing ones yeah. that we talked about, and it's like, tucked right in and it looks like it might be like a tear duct kind of thing for them and it's not it's another set of eyes and then they have the endoparidia eye which is right in between the median eye so it's just one eye it's not okay. the of an eye so because they're related to like arachnids so yeah. they have like multiple eyes yeah. okay I'm done just piecing this together yeah. sorry and then they have their ventral eyes which is on the underside closer to their mouth okay and then I was have, wor- worried how they find food. Oh yeah, well, they could have like sensed it, but that's yeah. how they're sensing it. By pretty smell, much. yeah. And then uh, they're, Grubhub. They're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their photoreceptors cluster, which is on their tail. So they have like a type of eye on their tail too. Oh wow! Which is also another reason don't don't pick them up because you might poke them in the eye. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. 
And among all these eyes that I just listed off for you, they actually have exceptionally poor eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> so many eyes that do so very little. Yeah, so they like can sense light and stuff, and yeah. that's pretty much it. Wow. Yeah. Um, they Their main eyes, the compound eyes, actually like, you know how, how do I phrase this? It'd be like shows on Animal Planet where they're like, this animal actually has the largest set of eyes when you compare it to its body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, yeah. So they have the largest, like, structure of eye. Yeah. Like they're, oh, the thing that, like, the front of your eye to the back, the cones. They yeah. have the largest cones of, like, any animal, but the way they're, like, laid out isn't smart. So they still can't see? Yeah, like, it doesn't, it doesn't give them better eyesight. Yeah. So, uh, I just thought that was, you know too bad for them but <laughs> they're living their life regardless and then behind their legs on the underside so closest to their tail is where their gills are okay um and their gills are obviously used to breathe well but yeah. also i guess sometimes it helps them swim sure and i had no idea that they could swim and they swim upside down at a 30 degree angle that's weird I wish you could see <laughs> what I'm seeing because <laughs> this is Hannah's so HSC impression. You, like lean on your back a little in the air and then you just wiggle your fingers around. Yeah, but they, wig they wiggle body. their walkie parts. Yeah. Is yeah. That, yeah. And so their legs are a mix between obviously used to move on the ocean floor, swim, and they are called their pedipalps. Okay. That's because they're like, like spiders too. Yeah, because they're like a mix. Spiders have petty palps. Yeah, and uh -huh. they uh, it's it's like the foot and the touchy bit. Yes. Okay. And they're some of them have like f it's like flippery. It's okay. Not just like crab claws. They're flippery. So okay. They're, they're good for swimming, but I had no. I've never seen one swimming, and if I had, my nightmares about them would have been like <laughs> through the roof. <rest. laughs> or I thought it was safe swimming. Do you think you might have been like, what is that thing? No, I would have recognized it yeah. right away. Just, I'm just thinking because like, it's upside down. The amount, the amount of horseshoe crabs I've yeah. handled, I would have known. <laughs> I would have been surprised, but I would have known. Um, it has six pairs of legs total, and two of which are for pushing food into its mouth. Like okay. the little Roombas they are. Yeah. Um, and they do have the power to regenerate limbs. Like Wolverine style? Sure. Cool. Yeah, why not? They can heal parts of their shell. Hmm. So, like, if they get, like, scratched, crunched a little, depending If on someone happens trauma, to step yeah. on them. Yeah. yeah. It, they can um, fix, it. fix it over time. I don't know how long, but they can fix it. Yeah. Um, so, there's obviously females and males to this species. And the males. Yeah. <laughs> latch on. <laughs> yeah, that was such a weird... <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. So uh, the females are like three times the size of males. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and the males do latch on to the female during breeding season. And I, as a child, we all were told that was their baby. Oh, and okay. I mean, eventually. The babies don't need to cling on, though. No. I was going to make a Star Trek joke, but I couldn't think of one. <laughs> um. So interesting about the males, they can only breed when they have reached their final year in life. Oh, wow, really? So they develop the claws needed to latch on to the females in their terminal uh, molt. I almost said shed, but it kind of yeah. same idea. So their terminal molt produces them the claws they need, which are like boxing glove shape, yeah. to hook on to the females to mate. And then that's their terminal molt. So after that, they're... Oh, man. Yeah. How depressing is that? Live your whole life. You're just being like, oh, I get to hook up, but bummer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, they, they hang on to the ladies and um, they mate during spring high tides. Okay. So between like May and Ju June, I think end of May typically, and a little bit into June. And they find sandy areas still. So big fans of the sand. And they use the tides to, they lay their eggs, and then the males, you know, yeah. do what they do. 
No, they <laughs> do what they do. They fertilize them, and then they hang on for some time because the females lay a lot of eggs, and they lay them in th- in like batches of a thousand or so at okay. a time. Um, they have about sixty thousand to one hundred and twenty thousand to lay within a mating season. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, they're getting busy down there. I guess so on the beaches. And the eggs take about two weeks to hatch. Yeah. And then they hatch into their larva. And the larva molts six times within the first year before it looks like a... Before it actually looks like a horseshoe crab? I think it starts to look like a horseshoe crab pretty soon. But yeah, they're tiny little guys. So they molt quickly in the first year, like most things do with shells. Um, And guess how long these things live? 27 years. You're kind of close. 20 years is right. the average. That's pretty close. And that was shocking to me. I thought it was like... I went 27 because I was going to say 30, but that seemed I thought too high. these were like a, a one season and done kind of creature for some oh, really? reason. But you know, no, it's... like butterflies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's not... It's this, a lot of, that's a lot of effort. That's for, a lot of horseshoe crabs. Yeah. You know, coming and going um, in this world. So, no, that's not what happens. They're very old. Um, Hang on. 20 is not very old. For an animal like that, oh, I think. Uh, all right. I'm just... Right? I mean, for well, the size, but I mean... Yeah. I'm just saying. Like... But lobsters... Room, room, lobsters... Yeah. Like, <laughs> lobsters live for like... Oh, long an time. An extreme amount yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. you let them. Well, it's true. Yeah, because they don't... Die. They don't die ever. They don't die of old age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Like, a lot of things get old and die. Yeah. It's, Lobsters just keep growing. Yeah, until we until eat Until something eats them. True. Well, Weird. you don't want them too big. They get yeah. tough when they're too big. It's tough to cook like a really big lobster. Pro- yeah, well, like, you're not allowed properly. to cook the really big ones anyway. Yeah. No. Really and this is about horseshoe crabs, fish. Yeah. Know, <laughs> keep I your had, lobster facts to yourself. I had to bring the lobsters <laughs> in. I had to mention them. Um, so what's putting them at risk? There's a couple things. Um, people stepping on them? Yeah. Yeah. That's putting uh, us at risk too. Well, Careful of probably uh, bad things in the ocean. You know, I mean, like <laughs> <laughs> the sharks. No, sharks aren't bad. They're misunderstood. No, I mean chemicals and pollution. And I think that's part of it. Um, so one of the biggest things for horseshoe crabs is the harvesting that humans do for their blood. Why would we do such a thing, Hannah? Yeah. Well, let me tell you about it. So well, segue, it, Andy. Yeah. Uh, crabs use... And is it all bad? What? The things we need? That we harvest their blood? I... No, it's not, like, all bad, but I've seen, like, the documentary about this when I was in high school. Yeah. I went into high school and I was like, y'all, you're not gonna believe this. They use horseshoe crab blood for our vaccines, and everyone was like, Mm -hmm. go smoke some more weed and get the hell out of here. Like, they did not believe me. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I well, tried, tried being a high schooler and telling that to other high schoolers because they were like, no. Yeah. And I was like, all right. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> You'll all see. Um, so, yeah, they harvest them for blood. The crabs, uh, the horseshoe crab's blood has something in it called hemocyanin. Hemocyanin. okay yep in their blood and that's actually it's what carries their oxygen and what's make makes them blue bloods Mm -hmm. yeah it's like we have hemoglobin that makes our blood red exactly it's hemocyan which makes it blue (laughs) you look at me like i'm disagreeing with you (laughs) see i know what i'm talking about i was like so yeah they're blue bloods yep back in the blue is not a show, Blue Bloods? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With, um, your parents probably watch it. No, well, my these parents probably yeah, watch it. Yeah, my parents it. don't. Yeah. Um, definitely not my dad. Uh, I just know I just know he hates that show. Okay. Like, <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, so the amoeba sites in the crab's blood that acts as white blood cells mm-hmm. like we have has been found um, necessary for us in order to run our vaccines through some testing. So Mm -hmm. it's collected from them, um, specifically the Atlantic horseshoe crab. I don't know what they're doing in Asia with theirs. They do eat them. Yeah. But I don't know if they collect. No, they, yeah, it's one of those things. They They eat it there. They don't taste very good. But, um, 
you can't eat them. And they use it to the, their blood to make a uh, limulus amoebocyte lysate, and they call it L A L. Let's call it that. All right. All right. No, I so I, that- I, I, I underlined <laughs> and said that's how I'm going to say that for the rest of the L A L. So L A L is used for detection of bacterial. Uh, endotoxins and like I said is specifically used for testing batches of vaccines to make sure that it's not contaminated Mm -hmm. so it has proven to be like just the most valuable thing when that comes there's there's nothing else like it that's been approved on the market and people have had attempts to it there there is a synthetic version of it made Mm -hmm. and they've used there's like a company one of the big pharmacies Lily Lily something. Sorry. I actually had it written down on my other set of notes. It's okay. Just know that it's Big Pharma, and they were actually pushing to try and pass this. Yeah. um, Or get this approved. And um, one of the the Big Pharma gods above them, so it's the (laughs) the U.S. Pharmacopoeia. Okay. Said no. It's, like, never going to happen. He's, like, SOL. When they harvest the blood. Uh Uh-huh. It doesn't actually kill them, correct? No, well, yes and no. Okay. So, they're harvested and brought back to the labs. So, like, they people hire, like, fishermen yeah. to go and grab them, who are specifically, like... Or people named Hannah will be like, I can find them anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's, like, high, high tide out, you just go and grab them. And then you can probably set up traps, too. And uh, they bring them back to the labs, and they drain about 30% of their blood. About. About. And then of the ones they bring back to the lab and release, about 3 to 30% of them die. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Because our, how much of their blood is getting sucked, sucked out? Sucked out. Yeah. Like, which one of those guys was picked up last week? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. And then um, I'm sure, I think they do have a way of tagging them now. Like mm-hmm. They do for lobsters. They'll um, punch, hold their tails if they can't. Uh, take those lobsters like any uh, females who are like laying eggs or whatever yeah, so, yeah. and I'm sure I think there's certain times in the year they can't take horseshoe crabs so mm-hmm. mating season is obvious um, they spend one to three days away from the ocean in this lab getting drained or yeah. getting organized to get drained and then uh, they get sent back out and whoever makes it makes it but that's like a huge toll on sure if it can be as many as 30% yeah, yeah and then like, if they're, imagine how, like, I don't know how horseshoe grabs feel at any given moment, like, about their general health, but imagine how not good they feel going back in after, like, oh, after you get, maybe, maybe like, most of their blood is missing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just like, I well, feel me, tired. Yeah. yeah, like, nobody's giving them a cookie and orange juice. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, a snail to go, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, yeah. Have some worms, buddy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) And they can live for four days outside of the ocean. Yeah. As long as their gills stay moist. Okay. So I imagine they have someone going around spraying them. them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And the labs are, like, set up exactly like you think it would. Like, so the way they do it is um, they have the crabs, like, in a little thing, a mount, Mm -hmm. strapped and then they push their bottom side up so their tail is facing up and they have an IV coming out of like the joint that has their tail attached. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's just blue blood like like clear tubes of blue blood like floating and circling around the lab. It looks crazy. Oh, it's weird. I know, I yeah, hate it. It seems very sci-fi. Yes. Yeah. The first time I saw it, that's why I went in high school and losing my mind about it. <laughs> I, still, I like still can't believe they do it. And then yeah, they give them back to the fishermen and they say there you go these little buddies are good and then they go drop them back back off in the ocean and whoever makes it makes it i guess so um the bleeding affects a lot of stuff including their ability to spawn um so obviously it's taking away just their general health right so it would impact their ability to do things necessary in their lifetime, so spawning being one of them. Right. Um, it impacts the female's egg production, and just you know. I'm oh, sure you suck out thirty percent of your blood. Yeah. You're gonna have a rough few days. Yeah, you are. Um, 
So some things have come up about like they're obviously the the bloodletting of the horseshoe crab. <laughs> Um, like I said, that pharmacopoeia declined y- using that synthetic um, that was made in Japan, I believe, Okay. in 2020. But in 2019, the Senate pushed the FDA to try and find an- another solution yeah. to this because they see it as... And then we had a lot of vaccine to test. Yes. Like a lot. So they're trying to f- find an alternative Yeah. and push for an alternative, but it's looking to be very difficult because they think that is like the industry standard for it. Right. Um, Is there anything else in there? No? Okay. So that's one of the bigger causes for them, like having a hard time out there and their numbers on the decline. Horseshoe crabs are also used for baiting. Like certain things eat them. Yeah. So, um, and about 1 million a year are used for baiting. Yeah. And eel, conch, and whelk all eat them. Okay. So, for any fishermen... That are out getting those things? That's what they use hmm. sometimes. Um, and they've obviously suffered, like you said, for chemical Environmentally environmental type stuff, yeah. Overbuilt um, to shoreline and stuff like that. Yeah. When you think about, like, how many horseshoe crabs got roughed up every time they drudge the bay oh yeah yeah you know what i mean right stuff like that uh pretty it's a bummer but hopefully they can swim out of the way you know <laughs> or upside down go, 30. yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> how they swim again hannah <laughs> <laughs> i'll show you another time all right uh, we'll do a tiktok video for that and <laughs> <laughs> some areas in some states have uh moved to protecting them are and they endangered? Are they they're not, in, at be, risk? Or? They're at risk because their numbers have steadily declined. Okay. And what they actually, de- they're deciding to protect horseshoe crabs, not for the horseshoe crabs, but because of endangered birds that eat their eggs during spawning season. So because their spawning huh. is like getting messed up, yeah, it's uh, counteracting the efforts to you save like the piping plover. Yes. Oh. You know, so, it's almost like it's a whole system of ecology. That yes. <laughs> and I thought it was so funny that they're like, how are you crabs? Whatever, fine. We'll, yeah. we'll save them. But we've, it's the birds. You know what I mean? Because like, birds are cuter. Yeah, yeah, they are. But I find, so, we got to find that picture of that that horseshoe crab staring. Okay, it's yeah. You, you send it to me and I'll put it in the, the graphic for this uh, episode. So there's de- like like things like that. I think New Jersey banned it entirely yeah like the entire state of new jersey and some other towns and uh different areas have put a ban on it for certain times a year that kind of thing um it like i said in asia they do eat them and i'm gonna assume they use them for bait and i'm also gonna assume if they were the ones coming up with the synthetic that they probably were using them for the same yeah yeah exactly um or at least similarly uh and by they, I mean Japan. But that's like almost pretty much it. That's the whole for horseshoe the whole story of the HSC? Of the HSC. No, but um, there is a group on Facebook that I follow, and it's the Horseshoe Crab Recovery Coalition. Yep. And they're really cool with uh, just general updates on efforts to keep the population at a healthy level, um, just general news articles and things happening with them. And I know in April, they take volunteers to help do horse crab counts Mm -hmm. for the new year. So just cool stuff on there. If anyone's interested, follow them on Facebook. Is there anything that Joe Average can do to help horse crabs? Yeah, I mean, I know I talked a lot about picking them up. Just leave them alone. Yeah, just just don't pick them up. <laughs> yeah, unless you see them in a compromised position or something. <laughs> Baking in the sun, yeah. yeah. Like, it, use your turtle logic with them. Okay, don't pick them up. If they're not they in, might be ninjas. If yeah. they're not in immediate danger, you don't need to touch them mm-hmm. kind of thing. Okay. Um. Then, yeah, I mean, I can't believe we need to get you to a horseshoe crab. This is yeah. wild. Okay, we'll make a field trip. Yeah. Our... We'll put it on the long list of Old Colony Cast travel. This one's easy, though. We could, like, go take care of this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we can nail this one down. 
But it's, yeah, they're really cool. I think they're like one of my favorite ocean creatures. Uh, something I've spent a lot of time around, <laughs> maybe more than the average, but I yeah. really have appreciated their presence, even though I've been terrified of them for, I was really scared of and them. And impaling you? I've been told like several scary stories about that. Oh, uh, I see. But yeah. So, um, one time me and my brothers were clamming in Saquish Bay, which mm-hmm. is now taken over by that oyster company. Okay. I forget what it's called. They sell all their oysters around here. I'm proud to recognize it. Yeah. It. Sorry, guys. Um, we're giving you a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, yeah, we were clamming around there, and then the tide came in, so that's when the horseshoe crabs are all, like, walking around on the ocean floor. Yep. And we had to get to my mom, who was on the front beach of Saquish. Mm-hmm. So there's a pretty large point you need to get around. Yeah. And instead of walking it, because we didn't have shoes. Yeah. We decided to, like, take the ocean there. Yeah. But I was terrified to step on a horseshoe crab, so I swam the entire way. In, like, two foot deep water? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's exactly like, right. Like, to the point where it is harder to swim Yeah, it and my yeah. brothers were just, like, walking the whole time, and I was like... <gasps> it's like that old, like, CNN <laughs> clip from... Um, Hurricane Katrina where like the the news anchors in like a canoe and then like two guys just like walk by and it's like ankle deep and they're yeah. just like looking at yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That was me. Yeah. 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 But I, I had swimming to. Swimming backwards at a 30 degree. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I look like one of them they won't attack me. Yeah. I pretty much was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one of my horseshoe crab stories but they're they're cool little doobies. I, if you haven't seen one go check them out. <laughs> they're at your local beach. <laughs> I mean if you live in the places we said. Yeah. Yes, if you live in the east coast of the United States or south or southeast Asia. Otherwise. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's not as easy as I just thought it was. I know. But. Yeah. Sorry, most of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the part where we stop talking. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. You can find us on all social medias at inebriart or on Instagram at inebriart6. You can email us at inebriart at yahoo.com. And make sure you listen to the other podcasts on the Inebriart Podcast Network, including Bar Talk, Old Colony Cast, Retro Redoctopus, America's Hometown Horror Podcast, and our newest one, Theme Park Legends, a podcast about working at theme parks. What else? And we'll catch you again next time.